Hi, my name is Fatem. I'm a senior software engineer working at Autodesk. And in this video, I'm going to take you to work at office with me. My job is entirely remote. Actually, Autodesk as a company is hybrid first, which means as much as someone's job would allow them to work from home, then Autodesk is not mandating them to be at office, unlike the other tech companies around Bay Area. But even with no mandate to go into office, since we have two beautiful offices in San Francisco, I sometimes get the urge to change things up and go work a day in office. Actually, there are occasions where I would have to be in office, but that's only like once or twice a year where leadership and everyone else on the larger group that my team belongs to flies into San Francisco. And we have this sort of all hands connect and strategize type of meetings. But today we don't have any of those meetings. It's just me wanting to be at office and get to socialize with some coworkers, do some of the fun activities that our offices always coordinate. As I go through the day and I show you the interesting and pretty corners in our office, I'm also going to share some things that I've learned in the past two years. With all of the context out of the way, now let's go to office together. So the first thing to do at office is to set up the desk. As you see, this is a pretty plain thing. It's just a monitor with a chair and a desk itself. Since these desks don't actually belong to anyone, they're reserved on a daily basis. I have to bring in my own laptop, keyboard, mouse, chargers. So I'm about to make my setup for the day on this desk here. Here's my setup for today, my mouse, my laptop, and here is my handy dandy notebook where I document and keep track of everything I do. When I was an intern and initially when I became a full-time software engineer, I used to open my email first thing in the morning, just respond to everyone and if there was any action items in the emails, I would address them and then hit reply. That might sound like it's a good idea, but actually answering to emails would take my attention off of things that I would have to do for today in order to make tomorrow's deadline or this evening's deadline. Now, instead of answering emails first thing in the morning, and giving that focus time away to what people want me to do, I focus on things that I have to do in order to make my deadlines. And this totally means putting off responding to someone for at least a week, let's say, because I'm not available to talk about this project with you until I wrap up the things I'm doing right now. The desk and the chair is comfortable and whatever, but because we have all these fun corners and sitting arrangements around the office, I tend to not sit at my desk for more than 20 minutes. I just take my laptop and sit in different chairs and couches throughout the day. I think it helps me be more creative and it gives me a change of scenery. I'm honestly kind of obsessed with the variations of chairs and couches the interior designers of this office were able to find. No corner looks like the other. The colors are different. The sitting arrangement is different. Literally the chairs, like they're not the same. Every single corner that you sit in gives you a different vibe. If you want your uh, surroundings to be quiet, you have a corner for that. If you want to do a meeting and the size of your group is small or big, like all of those are taken into account around the office. Right now it's time for lunch. Sometimes our office has lunch, but not today. So I'm about to go to one of the nearby restaurants with one of my friends. All right, back in the office. This is one of the many kitchens that we have in this office location. We have even more with different layouts, but right now I'm gonna get some coffee and get back to the work. So I have a quick 30 minute sync meeting coming up. That's why I'm walking to a meeting room. I rather do my meetings in a private area instead of at my desk so that not everyone is hearing the business of my projects and my team. Okay, I wasn't able to find a meeting room meeting room. I found this phone room that's really cute on the inside. So this will just have to do. 
Let me tell you another thing that I have learned in the past two years. I have learned that job titles are not very helpful in understanding what someone does on the day-to-day -day basis. If you want to understand what someone actually does, you have to know the structure of the team that that person is a part of, and you have to know the type of projects that that team works on. That will inform you about the day-to-day -day responsibilities of someone way more than the job title will. Job titles are an umbrella term, like two people could be called product managers, but their daily responsibilities and the type of things that they have to do can be completely different. This gets even more complicated when someone tries to explain what a product manager does versus what a project manager does, versus what a business analyst does, versus what a tech lead or a back-end lead does. Depending on the company and the team, honestly, the responsibilities of someone who's called a back-end tech lead could be very similar to the responsibilities of someone who's a project manager in another company. For example, in my team, we don't have a dedicated PM. That's why each of us software engineers slash data scientists are our own PM. Like we manage the project scope and stakeholder expectation and the project life cycle of the projects that we work on ourselves as well as developing it. In another team where the structure is different, software engineers would never be sitting down with stakeholders and directly interacting with them to understand what should this project be and like what do you want me to build out for you. When I first started this job, I noticed there's a lot of stakeholder management stuff that I was never taught in school. So I asked my manager to let me do a training as a product manager and he agreed to it because it aligns with my job uh, responsibilities. Um, after completing that training, I feel like I'm much more on top of my projects, not from a technical point of view, but from the uh, people management and project lifecycle management point of view. So in a very nice, unexpected turn, my friend Sriram found out about what I'm doing in this video. So he said there's some stuff that he has learned ever since graduating that he would want to let you know about. Sriram has a very different job at Autodesk than me. You work on the products of Autodesk, whereas versus I work internally. I build software for the Autodesk people, not the customers of Autodesk. Hey, my name is Sriram. Uh, I'm a backend engineer at Autodesk. Uh, I studied at the University of Waterloo and graduated four years ago. Throughout doing my various internships and my full time, I learned a few key, very generic um, things that you might find useful. First thing being that uh, communication is really important in an office setting and in a professional environment. And you're gonna have many mediums of it, Outlook, emails, Slack, Teams, whatever it is. I would always say designate one channel um, where you that you check regularly and that you use your primary source of communication to get back to people in a short period of time and the other things you can leave to check periodically for the rest of the day so it makes it easier for people to know how to reach you if there's something urgent versus something that um, you can sort of postpone or give less priority to do. the second thing i would say is kind of on the flip side of that is when you're prioritizing or scheduling your day make sure to block off chunks of time in your calendar for you to do heads down personal work that way people can't book over that and people can't disturb you um, and they know it's reserved for you to get stuff done. I love what you said about the channel of communication. One of the things I said was when it comes to emails, don't feel like you have to respond like right away. Because mm -hmm. first thing in the morning, you might have a bunch of emails from people that are from various projects. They're getting back to you and they're asking you questions. You might end up going down a rabbit hole of working on a project that doesn't have a deadline that's close by. But you're saying that at least open up one channel of communication so that people can you can always be reachable. I guess that's what I was missing out on. I do have periods where I just like don't <laughs> respond to anybody. Could be a difference between the structures of the team. Like I'm an internal, like anything that goes wrong in my software, we have at least a good solid 24 hours to fix it. Versus for you, you definitely don't want the customers to be like out there 
facing an error. Yeah, what was the third thing I wanted to say? I believe it was don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to your parents, kids. <laughs> don't do drugs. The other thing, which isn't really a personal um, like thing you should do, but rather um, kind of a lens of expectations you should come in with, is that um, a person A, B, and C could be joining a company, um, and they could all like, potentially expect to have similar experiences because they're joining the same company. But uh, from my experience and from other people I've talked to, that's not that hasn't been very true. It really, really is very team specific. Generally, when you join a place, um, so your experiences could vary vastly from somebody else who's joining an adjacent team. Um, and the reason is because in a lot of larger corporations, um, each team gets their own funding, their own resources, and team dynamic really determines the work you do, the social events you have, um, your ability to you know grow grow up the career ladder if you choose to do so. Um, and essentially your time there is going to be heavily de depending on that. So if you feel that you joined a, a company um, and potentially you're seeing that you're getting stunted, you're not really getting, keep an eye out for other teams because your experience could vary vastly between teams. Um, and that could make or break your time at that place. It's absolutely true that like the team itself is a unit kind of separate from the company part of it. There are some work culture stuff that makes it from the you know the bigger um the broader company it makes right. it into a team but then the managers and the structure of the team like what's available to you yeah. really affects you it also plays a part into determining what type of uh, company you decide you want to get into typically smaller companies it's more startup vibes or um, you know medium-sized companies uh, their team dynamics are more um, are less well defined so roles are more flexible and you have uh, more of a chance of delving into a variety of different things you can you'll be doing a little bit of pm work you'll be doing a little bit of project management work you'll be doing a little bit of this and that all right well thanks so much this has been a very pleasant surprise for my video this is kind of the end of the workday actually after this there is a small gathering that's happening at the autodesk gallery it's called a sip and chat it's an opportunity for people to come together network over food and drinks i think it's a really fun thing that autodesk does to yeah. cultivate culture of mingling and talking to each other it really like creates an opportunity to meet people outside of your team and with that said thanks for watching this video subscribe to my channel any questions any feedback leave it in the comment section and uh have a good day <laughs> this microphone thing is really hilarious, <laughs> but here we are. Take <laughs> <laughs> like a little wine glass. <laughs> <laughs> Ding! <laughs> Cheers!